Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm in the Plugin Alliance channel, and we have a special guest, one Jesse Ray Ernster. Jesse is a mixing engineer who has won Grammy Awards for his work with artists like Doja Cat, Kanye West, Burna Boy, and a whole bunch more. He's worked a lot on urban records where they kind of cross over into almost world music. But he's also been working on plugins, developing a new plugin called Back Attack that is just now being launched with Plugin Lines. I want to talk to Jesse about his career, his work as a mixer and as a plugin developer. Jesse, excited to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. How are you? Not too bad. So I want to ask you all about your newest plugin that is now part of the Mega Subscription Bundle. It's called Vac Attack. It's a tube-based opto compressor that's different than other opto compressors out there. But before we get into it, I just want to ask a little bit about your backstory. How did you get into mixing? And to my understanding, you come from more of a rock background, but these days you're working on some of the biggest hip hop and world music releases out there. What was that transition like for you? How did it happen? And what were some of the biggest things you had to learn when making that transition from one genre to another? Yeah, massive question. <laughs> well, I, uh, I come from a musical family and uh, my my mom was a singer songwriter who would travel back and forth to Nashville doing sessions. And my dad was a traveling musician full time and also was one of the early adopters of Pro Tools in Minneapolis. So we had a home studio. And at any given time, you know, we had drums set up, we had guitars, the keyboards were plugged in. It was it was a workstation ready to go in and just and make music at any time. So it was a great, great environment to uh to kind of cultivate and, and learn the craft. Um, so I came up loving rock records and, and, uh, that, that, that was definitely, uh, you know, what spoke to me as far as musical passion goes. Um, so upon moving out here, you know, seven years ago or so, that was, uh, rock was not exactly what was happening. And, uh, I found myself just kind of thrown in and enthralled by the, uh, the hip hop space and pop sessions and, and a lot more of that music. And now I work on a lot of Afro beats. So there was a little bit of a learning curve going from that world to where I'm at now. But uh, I, I found that a lot of the, well, the technical attributes of maybe compression don't necessarily carry over because a lot of modern music has sounds that are already processed and realized. Uh, a lot of the energy of rock and roll music and a lot of the emotion and the decisions that you make to, to inject emotion and energy into the music are all exactly the same and they translate beautifully from genre to genre. Uh, if you're feeling it and you can get into the flow space of it, you just, you let it out and, and hopefully something good comes out of the speakers. And lately it has. What's that like crossing over from having a background in rock music to now working on some of the biggest hip hop records in the world? What's the learning curve like? And what do people who come from rock backgrounds have to learn or have to change about the way they listen to music or produce it to do it right? But the biggest thing for me was learning that I didn't need to compress things the same way that I did with, you know, live multi-track drums, for example. You know, there was, I was really used to smashing and, and kind of shaping the envelopes of these different, you know, microphones to, to produce big sounds. And on a lot of the music I work on now, uh, the sounds are already there. They're already pretty well established when they get to me from a producer. Um, so it, it's... A lot more just emotion based, just making decisions with faders and and with saturation and just you know griming things up and and just adding energy. So you're talking about griming things up a little bit. What are some of your favorite kinds of tools for griming things up in the context of hip hop? I love to use different saturation devices and different distortion boxes, and you know to have those attached to a bus and then be pushing the faders into those you know boxes. And the harder you push, and the more that you have these balances kind of interdependently melding and, and combining it creates just a a uh, a cosmic gumbo a sonic slosh it's just <laughs> I dig it's it. magical so question for you here your style of production that you do has it informed the kinds of choices you've made in developing your own plugins is there like a particular brand philosophy that you guys have around making plugins like what are you trying to accomplish with mixland as a plugin brand well as a user first and a developer second i find myself in these situations where I'm mixing or making a record and I'm really well aware of of the gaps in my plugin library where I'll want to execute something, uh, you know, and it might be a kind of a difficult command with like several plugins put together to to create a sound or or the routing might not even be possible. 
So it, it, it was always our idea from the very beginning that if we were going to make a plugin, it's going to be an innovative take and it's going to be a, a really useful utilitarian tool to allow the user to get from A to B very efficiently, very easily and allow them to just keep moving. Because uh, I'm not the kind of guy to sit and tweak and tweak and tweak and, you know, load up tons of plugins for, you know, 25 minutes dialing in a kick sound. It's like, no, I, I want to get into the song. I'm not a technical guy. I'm not a, a tr I EQ the hi-hat or the kick guy. I'm a song guy. I want to get to the chorus. I want to get into it. So I go quickly and I want these tools to really uh, enable the users to do that in a new way. Now, to my understanding, you consider yourself a little bit less of a technical guy. So you've hooked up with another great plugin maker to kind of join up and execute some of your ideas. It is Eddie from Kive Audio, another member of the Plugin Alliance family. Can you tell us about how you hooked up with Eddie and what each of you bring to the table in that relationship? Eddie, Eddie, my bro, if you're watching this, Eddie, I love you. Yeah, it was uh, a few years back now. Eddie was just uh, really beginning to put together his first batch of plugins for release. And this was towards the tail end of the pandemic. And he reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to try these out and maybe give an artist quote or some presets? I said, yeah, I, I would love to try these. And I was extremely impressed right away. And I, I was also, aside from that, I was considering developing some plugins as well and I had downloaded juice and I was beginning to learn how to code but it, it just wasn't it, it wasn't clicking the right ways and uh so we got on a call and I told him about a few of my ideas and he said dude I want to do that let's do it together I said yes yes uh so that's kind of been the uh the division of labor at this point uh, we we tackle a project I will conceptualize I will do mock-ups of the GUI you know, I'll write down our, our block diagram and kind of it, it sort of just jot out what the circuit should do and kind of the overall idea. Sometimes we'll put together a pitch deck and we'll, we'll find the best ways to, you know, name a product and who is it going to be for, you know, how to market it. And anyway, when all that's put together, then Eddie is the guy who does the front end and back end engineering and developing. He puts it all together for your computer enjoyment and he makes it sound amazing. It's so He's the best. Yeah, I think your first plugin with Plugin Line speaks to that a bit. I've looked through the roster of Mixland plugins, and some of them look unlike anything that I've seen from any plugin brands before. But Vac Attack is one that's more of like a twist on the classics, almost a different angle and approach to a kind of tool that a lot of us are familiar with. It is a tube opto style of compressor, but can you tell us what makes Vac Attack different, unique, and kind of separates it from other opto tube style compressors in the pack? Uh, it's inspired by, you know, one of my favorites of all time and one of many, many, many tens of thousands of records have been mixed with this device and devices like it. And this is, uh, this is a unique take on optical compression. The, the curves are very specific. Uh, they're a lot faster and a lot more musical. It, this is, even though it's an optical compressor, it's, we spent a lot of time getting the grabbiness of it to be just exceptionally strong and have that strength that I feel like analog gear has. It almost responds more like a very mu compressor than it does an optical, just in the way that it grabs and, and has this just enormous heft and, and strength. So are there particular places where you might use the VAC attack that you might not be inclined to use a more traditional optical compressor? In scenarios where a traditional optical compressor would maybe be a little bit slow on the recovery time and just, you know, because of the lack of sidechain options, there, there might not be enough flexibility there to add and Im improve the sound, the sound source. Uh, this one, however, can really allow the user just great flexibility and, and tremendous capabilities to dig in and craft a sound that improves the source. Even when you think a song is done, uh, this, this tends to take it over, over the, to the next level, over the edge. Beautiful. Very cool. So there's a couple of also unique controls on this that you're not used to seeing on most opto compressors. First of all, there is a knee control. It allows you to go between a hard knee and a soft knee. Can you give people a sense for how you might use that type of control? I think there's a lot of folks out there who kind of vaguely understand the concept of knee, but don't really have a sense for how you'd use a knob like that on an actual mix or on an actual sound source. How are you inclined to use the knee control on this compressor? Yeah, absolutely. I think of the knee as a ratio or an intensity knob. Uh, as you turn it to the right, you're going to get much more in intense compression artifacts and a really, really a kind of blown out sound. And as you go to the left, it's going to be just a, a much more smooth compression experience, a lot more conservative. So, you know, you might go 
some of those softer knees for uh, you know vocals, acoustic guitar, anything you want to just feel a bit softer and, and more gentle. And as you turn up that knee, it's just it's really going to begin to uh, shape the transient and smash the sound. Very cool. Now, one other control that's on here that you don't find on many compressor plugins is there's a low frequency push and high frequency push knob on this compressor. What do those do? In it of themselves, those are just a low and high shelving EQ, but they push directly into the saturation and the knob is right off to the right of those EQs. So you got the low push, the high push, and then the THD knob. So depending on how much saturation you dial in, which is essentially just blowing up the harmonic response of the unit, you're then EQing into that and it changes the overall texture of everything coming out of the box. It's gorgeous. Uh, so for me, a big thing with using uh, original units like this was that on background vocals or vocals, I would always want to, you know, you have 10 or 12 vocals stacked up. I would always want to cut out some lows and boost some highs and also just growl it a little bit, dial in some saturation. So those three controls work that way for just extremely fast use. You know, you queue up the compressor, dial in the compression amount that you want, adjust your low and high push, dial in some saturation, you're done. You're off to the races. You can keep mixing. It's a tool designed for really, really quick operation and just ease of use. Love it. So if you had a friend who was just going to be trying this plugin for the first time today, what kinds of things would you encourage them to try it out on first and with what kinds of settings? Vocals. This is just the easiest way to gain ride a vocal. Like it sounds like there's a little tiny man or woman inside this device that's just turning up the fader. It's it's just glorious sounding compression on vocals. Uh, the original unit that this thing was inspired by has been used on tens of thousands of vocal mixes. It speaks for itself. It's incredible. Background vocals, vocals. I love it on acoustic guitar. Drums and mix bus have been some new favorites that I wasn't expecting to love this thing on, but because of the flexible side chain, I really can add a lot to drums and mix bus as well. And last but not least, bass guitar. Uh, whether it's finger bass guitar or with a pick on some heavier material, it just has a way of leveling things out all the way through the spectrum so you don't get low end notes like, you know, 80, 120, 150 for those notes just kind of stick up louder than the others. Evens all that out and it actually makes the pick or the fingers like push a little bit harder in kind of a transient designing sort of way. It's fantastic. Sweet. Awesome. Well, I know that you have so many more plugins that are inside that brain of yours that you want to develop yourself. Are there any other Plugin Alliance plugins that have been super inspiring to you? If, if you had to name your own top three Plugin Alliance plugins that you'd be likely to use on a mix, what would be some of your biggest choices? The uh, number one would be the Adapter Metric AB. Hands down the most useful tool of all time. Complete game changer for so many reasons. The ability to gain match and AB your mix against a reference mix so clutch unbelievable on um, the different metering and loudness kind of analyzation options that you can look at you can look at your phase scope on there it's incredible but the very best attribute of that plugin uh to me is that you can isolate the lows isolate the mids isolate the subs so i'll do that a lot in my workflow i'll just like isolate these different bands and just sit and just mix like that i'll just mix the top end for a while i'll mix the low end for a while just my i'm just chronically adhd so my ability to focus on the full spectrum when it's just playing this, you know, 20 to 20 information in my ear. It's just, it doesn't always work out. But when I can isolate it that way, it's so, so, so helpful for me. Interesting. I haven't quite heard of that uh, approach in so much detail before. Quick question for you, since you bring up references is, do you have a few favorite records? If you were going to go into a new room right now and try to get a feel for how that room really sounds, are there any classic releases you like to throw up to test out a speaker system in the room? The first one I usually queue up is a song called Concerning Hobbits by Howard Shore. It's just like an iconic Lord of the Rings uh, composition. It's just really beautiful the way that the imaging is in the mid-range. But there's also this really high-end like mechanical screeching whistling sound that's just really indicative of what the uh, top end is going to be like in that, in that room. Another one is a CLA mix. It's called Rewind by Rascal Flatts. I just always kind of know that if that one's a little bit, a little bit warmer, like almost on the verge of muddy in the mid range, it's, you know, if I can detect that in a new space, it, it's just about right. And then the last one that I check uh, the low end for is a song called Money by Five Seconds of Summer that Eric Valentine mixed. And it's just a very, very aggro pop punk mix. It's just very ignorant rock and it's just fun. 
I love that. I think it's something that people don't talk about enough is really tuning yourself and your body and your ears to the environment with records that you know. But I totally cut you off and made you go on a tangent. You're telling me about your favorite plugins. We got adapter audio being a great tool for referencing and checking out different parts of the frequency spectrum. What are some of your other top two? Yeah, so number two would be the BX SSL 4000E series EQ channel strip. And uh, that thing is just unbelievable in spirit i am an ssl console mixer uh in budget and in time constraints in the real world i'm not i am an in the box mixer with some you know hybrid with some outboard but i i love that plugin all right and number three choice the black box it's incredible i love to mix into it on the mix bus uh something happens when you build an entire mix and begin to balance everything driving into that device. The way that it interacts and all of the tracks begin to interplay with each other harmonically, they kind of meld together with the tubes. It does something special that when you bypass the black box, it's just, it falls apart. It's not the same. Well, Jesse, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. If people want to find out more about you and follow what you're up to, what are some of the best places for them to track you down? Yeah, you can find me at my website, jesseraymix.com or on Instagram, uh, Hashtag Jesse Ray Mix. Is that what they call it? Hashtag or just slash at, at Jesse Ray Mix. Yeah, shoot me a DM, say what's up, say hey, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I, I love to be in touch with the, the community of everybody making records. And, and uh, over at Mixland, too, we have a, a lot of free resources, some free plugins as well. And uh, they're yours for the taking. Drop in. Good stuff. And if you want to check out the latest from Mixland plugins over at Plugin Alliance, just go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out this or any of the other plugins for free for two weeks. Or if you're a subscriber of the Mega Subscription Bundle, this is just yet another part of your Mega Subscription at no additional charge. If you're not yet a subscriber, I think it's one of the biggest steals in the world of pro audio. Check it out. There is a 30-day free trial on the Mega Subscription Bundle. Thanks again for hanging out with us. This has been Justin Coletti with Jesse Ray Ernster here on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time. Even when the lights on, you can't let the blind.